is property. No, no, such as. So what, what is, where, where is, give us a piece of evidence that shows that the Bible is divinely inspired. Okay, um, the Bible says things about, about, um, about nature that uh, weren't widely known at the time. How do you know? And, and what, like, give me an example, first of all. Well, because we're talking about, we're, example, we're talking about a book. On and, uh, oh, no. Uh, first of all, Matt Slick's called in. Um, the nonsense at karm.org has been refuted I don't know how many times. But we're talking about a book that, if you actually take it literally, do you think the world is six to 10,000 years old? Well, um, there's a lot of interpretation. That's, that's an um, easy yes or no question. Do you think the world is closer to six to 10,000 years old or closer to 3.5 billion years old? Well, um, I, I guess if you, if, you, um, if you take it literally, yeah, the world is uh, closer to six to 10,000 years old. Matt asked you specifically what you believe. Because we're, you know, we're trying to get well, at what is the main reason why you're a Christian, and you're dancing all around. Why can't you tell us? If you, if you, listen, if you listen back to the way you just answered the, to that, or tried to answer, or actually tried to avoid answering that last question, all I was asking was what you think, and we were going to go from there. But I, I'm, I'm happy enough with your answer that, yes, a literal view would make it six to 10,000 years old. So clearly, either you think it's six to 10,000 years old, or you're not completely a literalist. Um, but irrespective of what your position is, do you at least acknowledge that all of the scientific evidence points to an Earth that is vastly older than six to 10,000 years old? Yeah, I'm aware of that. Okay, so how do you reconcile? It doesn't prove there's no God. But. You're right, you're right. Did I say it did? I'm not saying that that proves there's no God. What I'm saying is, here's something we've learned about the universe, and it doesn't match with your literal view of the Bible. Now, there's a conflict there, and we need to resolve that. And some people resolve it in favor of the Bible, saying the Bible is absolutely right, and ignore whatever actual evidence is presented there. Um, I find that to be patently absurd because it, it turns Christianity into a self-contradictory proposition, which is, and so, by the way, does the entire idea of a revelation in the New Testament. Because your, posi your position, uh, to, to the extent that I understand it, because I you haven't got a kind of a straight answer yet, is one where there is a God who has an important message for mankind. And somehow, he only reveals it to certain individuals who then write this down. And thousands of years after this initial revelation, we have to rely on copies of copies of translations of copies by anonymous authors with no originals. And the, a textual testimony to a miracle, for example, the loaves and fishes, there's no amount of reports anecdotal testimonial reports that could be sufficient to justify believing that this event actually happened as reported. No amount. And anything that would qualify as a god would clearly understand this, and if it wanted to convey this information to people in a way that was believable, would not be relying on text to do so. And this, for me, is the nail in the coffin for Christianity. You, the, the, the god that the God that Christians believe in is amazingly stupid if it wants to actually achieve its goal of spreading this information to humanity by relying on text, by relying on languages that die off, by relying on anecdotal testimony. That's not a pathway to truth. And anything that would qualify for a God should know this, which means either that God doesn't exist or it doesn't care enough about those people who understand the nature of evidence to actually present it. Now, which of those possibilities do you think is, is accurate? I think you, you do need faith to believe it. Sure. And but that, why would you believe anything on faith? Faith isn't a pathway to truth. Everybody's, every religion has some sort of faith. People take things on, you know, if faith is your pathway, you can't distinguish between Christianity, Hinduism, Judaism, any of these others. How, how, how is it that you use reason as a path to truth in every endeavor of your life, and then when it comes to the ultimate truth, the most important truth, you're saying that faith is required? And how does that reflect on a God who supposedly exists and wants you to have this information? What kind of God requires faith instead of evidence? Well, I think you probably have faith about a lot of things, too. Like what? I have, I don't, I have reasonable expectations based on evidence. I have trust that has been earned. I will grant trust 
tentatively. I don't have faith. Faith is the excuse people give for believing something when they don't have evidence. I mean, if you can come up with something that I believe that I don't have evidence for, guess what I'll do? I'll stop believing it. That's the nature of a rational mind. That is, the, that is the goal. My only goal was to be the best Christian I could be and represent this to people who didn't believe. And what I found, because I actually cared about whether or not my beliefs were true rather than whether they felt good, was that my beliefs weren't justified. Try as I might and pray as hard as I could. No answer comes. No evidence is forthcoming. And when I talk to people about this, the only answer they ever offer is the one you did, which is, well, you just got to have faith. Well, sorry, I don't. And not only do, well, I'm not sorry that I don't. I'm sorry for others that they think that, that I should have because faith is not a virtue. Faith is gullibility. It's yeah. evidence that determines whether or not your perception of reality is reasonable and in conjunction with the world as it is. Well, I think uh, church gives a lot of people uh, some community and some values. Sure. So what? That has no tie to the, the truth of the supernatural claims. Church religions and churches have tons and tons of benefits for the in-group. And some of them even have benefits for some of the out-groups with, you know, feeding the homeless. Although I really wish as many of the atheists do, we have the atheists helping the homeless group in Austin, where we will actually help the homeless without making them sit through a sermon first. Um, you know, it's, we're not holding their sandwich ransom in the name of Jesus. That you can do, there's no good thing that a church or religion does that cannot be achieved by purely secular means. And there's no benefit, positive benefit, of churches and religions that necessarily demonstrates the truth of their supernatural claims. But there, but there is, and this is my personal hobby horse today, there is a cost to deciding that you're going to take, uh, um, um, in particular, Christianity on faith. And that is that when you run into folks like us who don't believe it, you are compelled, because you have decided to believe Christianity, you are compelled to think all kinds of horrific things about us and, uh, and, and, and tell us that, uh, uh, or come at us with these threats of eternal torment, um, which just draws a you know an insurmountable line between us. Yeah, or we cannot be f we cannot be friends because of what you have decided to take on faith. That's the cost. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you that, that divisive cost um, plays out not only in the previous caller who had to give up his job because of good intentioned Christians, but I have a fiance sitting in the room. Um, who is essentially estranged from a good portion of her family who consider me to be the devil. Now, I may not be a perfect person, far from it, but I'm generally a good person and a caring person, and I do whatever I can to live the best life I can. I certainly am not, uh, well, I, I guess if I was the devil, this is exactly what he would say, um, so who knows. Uh, but the absurdity of the divisive nature of Christianity in particular, I, and by the way, I'm an atheist with regard to all gods, uh, but since you're kind of representing Christianity, it, it just, I mean, it breaks my heart. People who actually understand what love is, people who actually understand what morality is, people who actually understand reality, it, it, it is almost unbearable to watch the people that you love be so absolutely duped into a divisive, hateful religion that they think is not divisive, they think it's inclusive, and they think it's positive. It, it kills me, and it's one of the reasons that I do this. Because I, for 25 plus years, believed this stuff. I am so happy, so happy, that I no longer think that my former roommate is destined for hell. I am so happy that despite the fact that my relationship with my parents, the nature of it has changed, I don't have to worry about them. The division is entirely one-sided. I didn't end relationships when I became an atheist. Christians ended those relationships, and it was because their particular religion cannot tolerate. My, my, I, was, I had letters from people who said, we can no longer associate with you you are of the devil. Now, it's possible that they're right. 
It's possible. I don't know. I don't know under what circumstances. But the only way that you could demonstrate that is with reason and evidence, and not faith. And I don't know how we can fix a world where people have been so convinced that they are doing the right thing out of compassion and love and trying to help people when it is absolute poison, when it is absolutely destructive. I, I wish everybody could go through what I went through so they could have a, a proper understanding of, wow, how the heck could I have believed those things that I believed? And how much better life is when you want to deal with reality on reality's terms. I mean, I know that we didn't give you a huge lot opportunity to, to express your views, but every time I asked, I got kind of a dance. And I'm, I'm happy to have you call back in. But if your whole position is that the foundation of your belief is necessarily dependent on faith, then we got nothing to talk about. Because I don't think that that's a good thing. And until you demonstrate that faith is a good thing, how could you possibly convince somebody? And, and by the way, how do you go about demonstrating that faith is a good thing without evidence? It all comes back to reason and evidence. I think he's gone again. All right. I was going to give him the last word. <laughs> we only got uh, three minutes and 15 seconds left or so. Um, you want to do one more? Sure. Let's see. Um, Sure, we'll do uh, Joe in Seattle. Hello. Hey, Matt, honey, how you doing? Good, how you doing, Joe? Hey, Joe. hey guys, I called last week. I was so excited about calling that I, uh, I kind of just blabbered on, and you guys let me off the phone really quick. Well, I just wanted to say uh, you guys are doing a great job. I appreciate it. I, uh, a newly atheist after 35 years of being brainwashed, and I just want to let you know you guys are doing a great job. I, uh, I was just listening to you guys talk about losing friends, and ever since I've uh, been an atheist and, and been reasonably thinking and, and ask questions, people uh, kind of don't want to hang out anymore. And uh, I'm kind of in the same boat. Uh, I was just going to ask a question. Uh, how do you guys deal? I mean, how did you deal with it? I know it's been really tough for me to deal with uh, thinking that there's no afterlife. I've kind of come to a conclusion that um, there's no heaven now. So basically it kind of makes you feel better because you know you have to live this life the best you possibly can uh, now. Uh, based on the evidence that there is no afterlife, yeah, not, so there's not, no I, place to go that you got to take care of the place you I, already have here. Can I cut in? Me, I, I was just going to ask you a question. How do you guys feel about the, not having an afterlife to go to? Because that's the toughest part for me to last six or seven months sure. uh, being an atheist. Okay. Uh, death sucks. I'm against that. But if... Um, if, uh, if there's no souls or anything, then, then mortality is essentially an engineering problem. And the thing that we should be doing is supporting medical research into human life extension. So that's what I do. And, and my, my, my quick take on the afterlife, because we're running out of time, is that um, uh, religion gives you a disease and then offers you the cure. It, it <laughs> essentially convinces you that life is worthless unless there's an afterlife and then it offers you an afterlife. And once I realized um, that I hadn't actually lost anything real, um, then you know, I was fine with it. It would be like, you know, if for 25 years I believed I had a secret bank account with a billion dollars in it, and when I got to, to <laughs> age, you know, 26 or whatever, I found out that that bank account never existed in the first place. Would I feel depressed for a while that I had lost, you know, a billion dollars? Sure. And then eventually I'd realize, oh, you never had the billion dollars, so what you lost was this fictitious promise of a billion dollars, which is exactly right. what you've lost right. when you give up that afterlife. That, that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be nice to have a billion dollars, yeah. but the thing to do no, when you realize right. you don't have it is start working to accumulate it, not, <laughs> not, to get all, not to get all depressed because you don't have it. Yeah. And on, that note, and on that note, Joe, we've got to stop because we've reached the end of the an hour, but I appreciate the call. Thanks to everybody who uh, called in today, and thanks for helping us work out more of the issues of the phone. We'll do more uh, to see if we can't correct some of that. Uh, Steve Elliott, I'm, well, I'm not going to read them all off because it went by too quick. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye, folks. Oh, yeah, good grief. We need to talk about that again. Never. <laughs>